This is a two-part video on how to correctly install Forge Replay Mod and not use Badland Replay Mod to create good cinematics for edits and basically me teaching you how I make edits. This tutorial will show you how to install Replay Mod, Optifine, and Forge to effectively get replay signs and uh, make edits with them. So what you're viewing right now is just me installing Replay Mod and Forge and Optifine. And then later on we'll get in depth on how to record each individual sign with time keyframes and position keyframes. And yeah. Okay, so I didn't explain this as well in the tutorial because it was really late at night. But one thing that you're going to need to install is FFmpeg. FFmpeg is basically what lets you render replay mod files in replay mod. So what you want to do is go to the FFmpeg website. The link will be in the description. I have a link that takes you directly to the download. Just click on the link and it'll download the thing that you need. And then just put it somewhere that you'll remember. For me, I put it in my C drive. And then copy the link and paste it into the command line. There are a few key things that you're going to know, or need to know, when using the Replay Viewer. If you want to have your mouse on screen, then all you have to do is press the chat button. And your mouse will appear. And then you can mess with these. To disappear, press escape. And you'll be back into basically spectator mode. First, let's go through the bottom timeline. This timeline is used as, say you're recording. This right here is where the recording would start, and then it would continue until it ends. This is where you would place your keyframes, where you would place these. This is a position keyframe. A position keyframe is where a camera would be. So if I place a position keyframe right here, my screen will turn green because there is a position keyframe placed. This means that at a certain point in the timeline, or at zero seconds, my camera will be right here on this camera keyframe. A time keyframe signifies the time at which the camera is. So let's say I wanted to place the time keyframe right now. The time keyframe would be of right here. If I were to play the clip a bit and then place another time keyframe, you can tell that these are different times. If I go back here, then we are taken back to the time where our character happens to be over here. This basically puts a place on the timeline where things are happening. So, when you put both of them together in the same place, for example, if I go to the beginning of this clip, and I place a position keyframe where the camera is, and a time keyframe signifying that my player hasn't attacked the player yet, and then I play the clip for a bit. I can then move to a point where the player is about to get a kill, move the camera some, that way it's in a different place than before, and also add time to signify that the camera moves over a period of time. I can also zoom in and out on the timeline if I want my placements to be more accurate. I then continue this process by going through where each kill was gotten and placing keyframes. We know the player died somewhere in this area, so we placed a position keyframe and a time keyframe. A position to show where the player died and a time keyframe to mark the time at which the player died. We can then preview this path by dragging this yellow all the way back to the start and then pressing play camera path from cursor position. 
You can then view what you created. As shown, we just made a camera path on getting a kill. Let's explain the rules of camera pathing. Up here is the speed, where you can control how fast the preview plays. This top keyframe is known as the preview, and basically the original clip. You can play specific times by clicking on a time that you want that it'll highlight, and because I set the time very high, I can make it move very fast, or I can set the time very low, and make the players move extremely slow. Usually, the first two keyframes that you place don't load in automatically. These players have to take time to load into the keyframe. So usually, you have two keyframes of absolutely nothing, and it gives the computer time to load in both of the players. I'll show you an example. If I play, you see how the people ran in you have to create two keyframes at the start that aren't related to your camera path. That way it gives the computer time to load in your players. One last thing. FOV. A lot of people don't realize this, but your FOV has a very big impact on your camera pathing. I recommend for first person, which I'll show you in a second, you do 70 FOV, which is normal. And for cinematics, which would be the replay, you would do either 45 or less because there's enough shot to get your character without a lot of the background. This is what your character would look like with 40 FOV versus my original 80, where tons more of the background is showing and not giving enough focus on the player. If you decide to render, you'll see lots of options and I'm going to go through each of these. The first is the rendering method. The rendering method is how you render. You won't really mess with this a lot, so just keep it on default for now. An encoding preset, you usually want to press custom bitrate. That way the quality is better. You can then change the resolution, which is how you want your edit to look on YouTube. The resolution depends on what kind of edit you make. For this, we're going to do 1920 by 800. Make sure your FPS is very high. Now you'll hear a lot of editors say, don't use 60 FPS, and that is correct. But you always want to render your replay cinematics with 120 FPS. That way you have more time to time remap, which I'll talk about later. Bitrate, you can do from 30 to 50. I usually do 50, but it's up to you. Your output file is where you can name what you want your file to be. So we're gonna call it replay underscore example. If you choose to render your name tag, then you can render name tags of players in the game. Like how Satasudo has his name tag over here. You can choose to turn that off. I usually keep it off. This is used to stabilize the camera. It's not that important. This is used to chroma key the sky if you want to add effects to the sky, but hmm, I don't really recommend it. Don't worry about this. This is, uh, we do this later. We don't have to do this in Replay mod. Don't mess with this either. This is what it's going to look like if you don't have FFmpeg installed. Lastly, you're going to need to figure out how to install a depth map. A depth map is used to isolate the foreground and background in After Effects. There'll be a link in the description to a video on how to install this.